Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to my tutorial on how to create a looping smoke animation using After Effects and Flash. We're going to be doing this in a kind of 2D anime style. If you want to do really realistic smoke, you're better off using a particle system or something more sophisticated. Uh, this really is just for 2D kind of iconified animation rather than compositing into uh, real, real life footage. Okay, so let's take a look at what the final thing looks like. Here we go. So this is one that I've created myself. Um, certainly if you watch a lot of Dragon Ball Z and all that kind of fighty stuff, you see a lot of this smoke. And it's really quite difficult to get it to loop because it's such a complex kind of voluptuous shape that imagining how that's going to look and working it all out and doing all the kind of uh, maths uh, to get it to loop and get it to flow correctly is very difficult. So I figured out this way of creating a template in After Effects which does a lot of that maths for you and figures a lot of that stuff out for you so that you can concentrate on making it look pretty. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got in After Effects. We've got four different shape layers and they're all sort of triangle shapes of varying sizes. So the top one is quite small and purple and the next one's blue and a bit bigger, the next one's grey and a bit bigger, and then you've got this um, kind of green one in the background which doesn't have any curve to it. All the rest have kind of a, a slight curve to them. And we've got this green one, it doesn't have much of a curve to it. The grey one has quite a big curve, I worked out that that would look best. You can experiment and try different ways of doing it. Um, at the moment, there's no effects applied to this, but you might notice there's a bit of a wobble on these lines here. So there's no wave warp uh, attached to it yet. This is being done with a operand called Wiggle Paths. So if you don't know what an operand is, check out my After Effects tutorial on shape layers and you'll be able to find out there. So I'm just going to assume that you know how to do that. Let's just take a look very briefly. So we've got this shape. We've got this wiggle paths operand with a size of six, a detail of 100, it's smooth, and the random seed is 86. So all that's doing is just adding an extra layer of kind of chaos into these shapes just to stop them from looking too bland and kind of perfect and computerized. Even before we put any effects on it or anything like that, they're still looking slightly more natural and a little bit more interesting. So let's build them up slowly, these effects. I'm going to apply them. So this number four, let's turn on these wave warp effects. I'm going to turn on this circle one first. So that circle wave warp is the first one that comes on. It's got a height of 144 and a width of 344. The direction is 134 because that's what I thought looked best. The wave speed is minus one, so it's moving from right to left. It's moving, you can see, upwards like smoke would as it kind of flows. There we go. So that's this kind of pinky purple one we're looking at now. But that still looks a little bit boring. So what I've done is I've added a smooth noise wave warp after that. So that's taking this circle wave warp and adding the smooth noise to it so that it kind of makes it look a lot more natural and a lot more interesting. You can see we're getting these kind of more detailed edges, a bit more like smoke. And so we've already got a much more interesting looking kind of beginning to our template there. I've also posterized the time and set the frame rate at 10 because that suited this type of animation quite well. Um, you might notice that on the smooth noise I've also got a phase of 1 times 34 because that's what I thought looked best and there's a phase of 1 times uh, 121 on this first one. 
that's just from cycling it around and getting the best look for this particular animation. There's no particular science to it. The numbers are a bit baffling, but essentially I've just pushed the knobs around until they do what I want. So let's take a look at the blue one next. We've got, again, this circle, wave warp, and these are the settings if you want to pause it and check those out. And our second wave warp, which is smooth noise, which is kind of making this nice bumpy sort of texture and making it look a lot more interesting. Just a point that all the wave speeds in all of these layers are going to be minus one. If we had them at different speeds, it would make everything go out of sync and it would look very poor. <laughs> it wouldn't work at all. Both of the phases are set to 180 and the direction is 134 for both of those. That makes sense that they both be the same. We want them to be moving in the same direction. So let's move on. This grey one, we, again we've got a circle and we've got this smooth noise. So we get these nice big clouds. What the circles do is they create sort of the shape of the cloud, the big chunk that we're going to see looping going over and over again. But the smooth noise breaks it up and makes it look more interesting and more natural. See if I turn it off, that doesn't really look right. If we traced over that, it would look like a load of weird blobs. So I've put the smooth noise on there just to kind of add that extra layer of detail. And you can see the phase is set to 19 on this one and 75 on this. So I've adjusted the phase so that the shapes appear in the right place when I want them to. You see if I move the phase around it alters where the cloud is at any given time. And I figured that a phase of 19 on this one would put it in the right place next to these two others and make it look cool. Uh, let's look at the last one. Again we've got this circle and we've got smooth noise on top of that. So this one in the background is a bit flatter, it's a bit smaller, just gives a bit of context and a bit of background detail. And you might be thinking, Andy, smoke isn't pink, blue, grey and green. The reason I did that is just to make them stand out against each other. So when I use them as a template in Flash, they're easy to trace over and it's easy to tell them apart. So because we've got a wave speed of minus one, we can find our loop just like we have done with all our others, one frame before one second. That's a one second, that's at zero seconds. So we've moved back one frame so that we get a nice smooth loop and we don't get duplication of this last frame. So we're ready to render this out, either using the media encoder queue if you're using After Effects CC, or adding to the render queue if you're using CS6 or any version before that. So once you do that, you can export it as a PNG sequence at 25 frames a second and import that into Flash. Again, if you don't know how to do that, make sure you've checked out my Wave Warp Basics tutorial where I go over how to do that. So in Flash, what we've got is that PNG sequence imported on this original layer like so. I've got a reference layer, so if I zoom out, you can see that's a previous version that I've done that I wanted to use as reference. And if we turn the original off, we've got this green layer. I've separated the colors of my template onto different layers just to make my life easier. I've done the same with the gray, with the blue, and with the purple. And these are guide layers, you can see, so they won't show up in my final export. And what I've done next is created a layer above them so that I could trace over each element on its own so that I can keep each one of them separate. See, that's the blue one, that's the grey one, and that's the green one. And that makes it a lot easier to trace and keep each one separate and simple. You might be thinking, that doesn't look that much like your template, Andy. You've done quite a lot of work to that to make it look interesting. Well, I think this is a point where it's really good if you read uh, Joseph Gillan's books, Elemental Magic 1 and 2. He talks a lot about how to draw smoke and how to make it look more interesting. 
essentially what I've done though, if we look at this grey one, just to kind of boil it down. So I've taken a shape like this, and I've drawn over it and made it more bumpy. <laughs> so I've, I've made the curves kind of chunkier, and I've added these extra kind of bumps underneath. Joseph Gilland very cleverly makes the point that you should try and avoid making the sort of thickness of the highlight the same thickness all the way through. So I could perhaps do with a little bit more variation in the, the thickness of this highlight. He says that it's best to avoid parallel lines. So you don't want the shadow or the highlight to be exactly the same thickness all the way through. If you were going to do that, you could just put a stroke on the outside of your shape and have done with it. So I tried to taper it a little bit and just get that kind of feeling of natural smoke. So if I turn those off, let's take a look at blue again. That was the template. And that's what I came up with kind of tracing over that. So I'll just turn that off again. And you can see I've just used my imagination and kind of created these bumps. Another thing I'd also mention is that consistency is really, really important. That's kind of the purpose of having a template is that you see a shape like this one here gradually moving upwards and staying roughly the same and kind of squashing down as it moves up. And then you can see it's turned up again here. And you can see you can trace it going back down into the bottom. So that's coming from that circle wave warp that we applied. It's just a circular shape that's going through again and again and creating that nice little loop for us. So this is where your artistic abilities come into play. You've got to make sure that you keep the kind of consistency of the shape, but make it look interesting enough when you trace over it so that it doesn't just look bland. It's something that you just have to have a go with and to try and get the hang of. One thing that's good about flash is if you draw something like this, you can do it as a drawing object and then just move it for the next frame. So you don't have to keep redrawing them. You can make each kind of little highlight like this a drawing object. So when you move into your next frame, you can just move it a bit further up, reposition it, maybe rotate it a little bit. And then you can also get that nice consistency of shape all the way through your animation. It's really important to have, if you've got a shape like this, to kind of keep a track of it all the way through the animation. Otherwise, you're going to get an animation that looks really cluttered and chaotic. So you can see we're tracing it all the way up here, and it disappears. So try and get a kind of consistency of shape all the way through it. So there you go. That's how I created my smoke, by making a template in After Effects, and then importing that into Flash and drawing over it. Have a go yourself, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Coloring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.